Mike and myself made those plates. Uh, it's a half inch thick steel plate. They are duplicates. They were uh, welded together so that we get exactly ex so that we get exactly the same placement for the holes. So I have those two. Actually, I have another one bearings that goes for the big sprocket. Uh, the small one here, here, and here for the small one inch shaft. I show you later what it looks like. So I am to the point I need to assemble that. So I need to uh, have the spacing. So we've made extra holes here so that we can assemble what is going to, uh, so we can fix them together. So those holes here and one on the corner so that they keep the same spacing and something also so they don't, don't move either like that or either twist. So that's going to be a two by two welded with those plates, half finished bolts here. And on this side is going to be uh, only a spacer with a threaded uh, rod. Um, that's pretty much it for now. Update, it's moving slowly but surely um, it's very long to assemble that kind of thing so this is where I am now uh, the input shaft with that gear um, all the bearings and shaft all aligned here is going to be first clutch second clutch the belt tensioner here is the actual uh, it's not supposed to be there it should not extend that much okay. um, assemble this so um, it's a two by two so it keeps that straight and from moving any directions and yet but not the least this is going to be the pivot point for all this that assembly to tension the belt so I said the belt tensioner here it's not it's not it it's to um, have a different path this is going to be the pin that is going to mount this all wall system it's most likely going to be like 250 pounds the let's say transmission it's going to be mounted on that pivot, moving from left to right for some adjustment for the belt. Because the belt is going to go along with the winch. <clears throat> okay, it's been a while. I didn't update you on the project. Uh, I've been working on and off on it sporadically. So it's hard to keep track of what I've been showing or not. But at this point, I know that uh, I've gone very far without updating anything. Anyways, it's time to catch up. Yes, this is pretty much all assembled. Let's say here is the piece of resistance. The winch itself was not too bad to reassemble. So Mike and myself, they did make a, let's say a frame on it. Uh, this is the transmission. I've cut the PTO. I'm going to put back the uh, covers. Well, it's just for the purpose of tiling.
And here is the control box. I'll have to mount it somewhere here. As you might know, I'm going to cover that because it's a, uh, it needs to be covered. You see. Okay. So from the driving shaft, gets into that transmission. So we have the TTO that goes onto that big gear. I think it's 68 teeth. Um, after that, the chain goes into that idler that is a tensioner. First clutch, small gear. I think it's 12 or 13. Same with the second clutch. This one does pretty much 180 degrees wrap around. And this one is for pulling. And this one goes maybe not even 90 degrees around the sprocket. And this one is for on spooling, which doesn't convey as much power. Once the clutch are engaged, and then you will see they spin pretty much in opposite direction. Again, there's the uh, pulley here that is uh, going to produce a little bit more than 180 degrees wrap around with those belts around the pulling winch clutch. And this one is pretty much barely touching it, is on spooling, doesn't require much power. And it goes to here, the input warm gear. And yes, by the way, this is a aluminum panel. And the reason for that panel is that on this side, I don't want for any reason the cable to go into that zone <laughs> for obvious reasons. So this is going to be mounted directly onto the winch. There's one cable like here. This is going to be the tractor side and the winch side, which uh, has a quick connect. So I'm left to that, make that set up on the tractor side with uh, decent uh, fuse. Inside this panel, I do have two relays because that remote and the controller cannot convey more than 10 amps and those clutch take pretty much 10 amps. Um, I have that momentary winch switch that can operate the winch from directly on the machine. This is an on off. So I'm going to put this on that indicates me that there's power in it. So it's going to drop power from the tractor. So I need not to leave that open full time or I'm going to draw the battery down. <clears throat> and here I have the choice either with that controller that is inside of this. So I put this on and you'll see the red light. Uh, winch in, winch out is going to also trigger the same on the machine. You'll hear the click. So winch out and winch in. And I can do simply like that. So what you see, winch out is going to trigger this one, as you will see. And you see the clutch engaging. By engaging it, it's going to uh, take this power and send that to the pulley. And this, this is the main clutch, by the way, to pull winch in. So it's going to take the power from here and send that to the winch. So in, out. So as you can notice, the chain goes underneath this pocket and on top of this one. So Always will the I'm going to spin the drive shaft by hand if I can, Oops. like so. Okay,
So voila, this is it for now. For what you hear, is the fan up there that is uh, pulling air from the garage. And on the other side, I do have the door crap open, so to pull the exhaust gas and fumes out of the place. For obvious reasons. So next step is to install this permanently on the machine. Yes, I'm missing this. I'm waiting for it to be delivered. I'm going to uh, add it as soon as possible. I'm going to put a cover here, sides going down, so put it to protect this from the mud and whatever. So that's the next step. See you in a few hours. Yay! It worked.